As a sports engineer, we fulfil three roles. We create equipment that will facilitate sports, create equipment that will protect people perhaps against injury or allow them to do that sport. And we're also there to create equipment that will enhance performance. So we're trying to understand complex problems in sport and sports equipment. And there's only so far that you can go when you're using experiments. Simulation allows you to get that extra wealth of data. I think if we weren't using engineering simulation in our, our daily uh, routines of designing sports equipment, I think uh, our job would be a lot more difficult. So for example, if we're looking at the impact between a tennis ball and a tennis racket, we want to change some design parameters, such as the coefficient of friction between the ball and the strings. It's very difficult to do experimentally. We have to create different strings, different balls with different frictional properties. It's relatively straightforward to do once you've validated your simulation. Ultimately, we're trying to improve the sports equipment to encourage more people to engage in sport. So when I first started, I was looking at the aerodynamic optimization of a wheelchair athlete. And this has continued over the years. So it's been cycling and skeleton at the heart of things. We've also done a lot of badminton work. Badminton's very much come to the forefront now. We've worked extensively with golf companies, their drivers, particularly the Crown region and the introduction of turbulators to reduce drag, golf balls to understand the physics that are going on around them, rugby balls. I could go on and on and on. There aren't many bits of sport kit that we haven't simulated using CFD. Currently we, we do a lot of work that is, is basically pure fluids. I think coupling uh, FSI uh, is, is really uh, an area where we're going to see the market moving into more in the future. Traditionally my research was based around the equipment itself whereas now we're moving more towards human interaction and, and biomechanics. For example, we're looking to develop an international standard for snowboard wrist protectors. Wrist injury is one of the biggest injuries in snowboarding, and we're trying to solve this problem through simulation. Benefits of us using ANSYS are it, it helps us to uh, develop equipment a lot quicker. It reduces our, our costs in those areas considerably. We use simulation to increase athlete performance. The gains are becoming smaller to find and that's why simulation is so important to help us find those small gains whilst working within the rules. If you've got your athlete well prepared and you give them a bit of kit that you've designed that you know is going to give them that extra hundredth or thousandth even of a second, it can make the difference between finishing fourth and a gold medal.